hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that too. Pork broccoli. Snowflake. Hail Baphomet. Thank you guys for listening. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Thank you for listening to The Jimmy Curve. Welcome to the show. I am the host, Jimmy Putnam, and with me, as always, is my sidekick, Will Doherty. I'm not Josh. And, uh, in fact, no one is Josh today. Josh, <laughs> Josh failed to exist on our show today. He is on vacation posting pictures of beautiful sunsets and other such nonsense. So, we are rolling duo today. Duo, dual. We are a duality. We are the, the duality of podcasting. I feel like this is where Josh would cut in. I'm failing to live up to it. <laughs> uh, no news segment today on the show. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're, since we're down a man, we are calling an audible, and we're just going to do some interviews. We're just going to interview a series of guests today and have some fun. So our first guest on the show today is an improv instructor an improviser and comedian from omaha nebraska who owns the 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 first owner of the backline improv theater <laughs> the original owner of the backline theater he is oi original improviser mm -hmm. dylan Rody. Yeah, yay 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 to me <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. You brought improv to <laughs> Omaha. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, so I had been doing improv in L.A. for about four years when I decided to move back and getting kind of just bored with the same old thing. I was being a waiter and doing improv a couple nights a week like about 300 other people. So... I wanted to do something that no one else was really doing and mm -hmm. wanted to stand out a little bit more and think more in the long run because all my favorite improvisers have been doing it for like 10 to 20 years. So I knew three, four years in, I had uh, plenty more years ahead of me. So I thought I'll come here, teach. And uh, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to teach in LA for years down the road. So I figured I'd teach, would see if I'd be any good at it. And uh, if I sucked, I'd move back to LA. And you are, in fact, joined on our show today by three of your former students. And, in fact, they are alumni of your backline classes, correct? Indeed. Uh, they are Tracy Mock, Todd Dillon, and Eric Green. Hi, guys. Yeah, you're on our show too. Hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey. Uh, I, I, I understand Dillon always travels with an improv crew just in case an improv show breaks out. Yeah, I keep, I keep them in my car at all times. That's it's, nice. That's smart. It's, it's like, like a pair of jumping cables. <laughs> <in, so. laughs> it's, like yeah. it's like having a law your own retainer. <laughs> you never know when an improv show is going to break out. You want to you don't want to be unprepared for that. We just lie and wait for a clear initiation and then jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you, somebody starts a sentence with, I have a suggestion, we're, we're there. <laughs> we're right on top of that shit. Right. You are the first guest, I think, to bring an entourage <laughs> to the show. I, I, which poses obviously one important question to me. Who sees themselves as turtle? <laughs> that's me. That's it. <laughs> oh, okay. it's, it's definitely me. Okay. That's, Eric, that's uh, the voice of Eric Green, everybody. Uh, I, I have described you thusly to people, Dylan, and I just want to see your, I want to get your reaction to this. I have described you before as a, a doer. I know that one of my personality flaws is that I will sit around and talk theory all day and never get anything done. You seem like the opposite. You seem like a person who has an idea when you want to do something and you just do it and you don't sweat the uh, consequences and you kind of work out the details as you go. Yeah. But those are the kinds of people who get things done. Would you say that that is accurate uh, of I mean, yourself? Fairly, yeah. I like I mostly get impatient really easily. So <laughs> right. like right now, I wish we were also playing like ping pong or something. Like <laughs> I just just sitting around talking isn't enough for me. I got to do more. I gotta, right. I gotta, I gotta well, do. you wanted to make you wanted to start an improv <laughs> theater and you just did it, you know. And I've seen you do that with other ideas too. You're like, I want to put on a sketch show, and then there's a sketch show. When I have those ideas, they never get done because I'm like, I want to make a sketch video. I think a lot of that is uh, I've had moments where 
I've done too much planning and then things don't get done. And that yeah. really bothers me. So right. like, if I put in time, I plan on getting it done. And if I think that the only way to get it done is to just start and figure it out from there, then I'll do it. Is it the process you enjoy or the desire for a product? Does that question make sense? Probably depends on what I'm looking at. Like mm. when I'm, I love the idea of like, as far as owning a theater, like building things is pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Like going in on a weekend and just painting. And, and you like built the the stage. Yeah. For with example. Some, uh, with some help. I think er- Eric had helped a bit, quite a bit when we moved. Todd's helped both uh, when we moved and very much lately yeah. in front of the festival and stuff on just some handy man work, um, handy person work. <laughs> it's nice to know a guy who has his own wood shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I have my own wood shop, so I'm the de facto builder guy. <laughs> this is a question that I wanted to ask you. You know, you mentioned at the beginning being in L.A. doing improv where there's like hundreds of other people who are wanting to get stage time, wanting to do things. There are fewer people in Omaha who want to do it. In fact, I, I, is it sometimes a struggle to fill classes? Yeah, it sort of depends. It, the level ones are usually the biggest struggle. Like we have a pretty decent, uh, what would it for be, people retainment who don't, level? For people, who, for people who don't know what level one is, improv is taught in class levels. You take a level one class and that's, what, seven weeks? Yeah. And then a level two. And there's five levels, right? Mm-hmm. Basically. Until you graduate. Uh, for, for me, this would be a major conflict if I was a teacher and an owner of the business. And I want to know if you've run into this before. Um, do you ever struggle between wanting to correct mistakes and wanting to retain students? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, uh, we had probably argued about this years ago. If not you, I've argued with many people over it. Yeah. That level of like, especially the early classes where I'm not hard enough on some people. But then I've also had moments where I've been too hard and people just give up. Right. And uh, it's a little tough to balance that, giving them enough criticism to make them better, but not enough to, to ruin their spirit. But retaining them as students to take, take more See, classes is not a factor? I mean, no, it is. Right. I, I try really hard to make sure that people keep at it. Um, I don't want anyone to just the bigger drop. The, the bigger the total pool of improvisers, the better the scene will be also yes. is, a, is a part and, of it. But it also helps your business. Yeah. And I it mean, also... a monetary factor. Absolutely. And it's not even just them staying in there. I mean, they've got to get better. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. Um, right. So there is a certain level where I get worried as they reach on where I'm, I debate, do I hold them back or not? I, I really don't like to, but sometimes... It's better for the whole class. Right. Right. I I feel like you were complaining about the student. You obviously know I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was one who was like, learning. Learning is a thing assholes do. Right. In right. between. I don't know. But I, I also do think it's amazing because you just described like, like doing improv, you have to weigh the balance between like applying enough criticism to improve someone and not destroying your spirit, which I feel like uh, – like, very clearly draws the delineation between like the worlds of stand up and improv because like having your soul die is like the first step towards stand up comedy <laughs> i feel like right well and comedians are also a specifically odd breed in this because no they one they eat their young <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're looking for that's great well no one who gets into comedy thinks they need to be told how to be funny and then when someone says no here's how you do it I just going through the levels of backline improv, I encountered a couple of people who just didn't want to listen or take direction ever. I always describe those classes as you'll get out of them exactly how much you want to. If you give yourself over to the process and pay attention and do the exercises, you will learn things about it. It'll make you better at every kind of performance, but it's very easy not to also. I mean, you've seen both, right? Yeah. And I, speaking of which, I remember one instance with you where uh, <laughs> this, was yeah. like, this, was, this was great because uh, I've always believed that a student should be able to ask me any question. And if I can't answer, either it's just a question like it's over my head and I'm, I'm sorry I can't answer or maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Right. So uh, always feel free to ask. And I try to never give such a generic response or like suggestion. But one day I said uh do whatever you think is fun or do whatever you think is funny and you just go what is funny <laughs> and <laughs> and you put me on the spot like what do you mean you just said funny i want to know what funny is right <laughs> and i was like uh, i mean it's different for everyone <laughs> i don't but... <laughs> I, actually I, i'm kind of remembering that 
And I think what I said was, how do I know what's funny? Yeah. You said, do whatever you think is funny. And I was like, well, how do I know what, because that's, because I felt like at that time you were telling me, well, just be funny. And I was like, <laughs> well, I'm coming here to learn how to do that. <laughs> yeah. So I got confused, but also I was probably just really angry. No, no, not a chance. I was actually on Jimmy's side with that one. <laughs> uh, but no, I, it, th that's true though. There are really frustrating moments going through those classes, but I felt like I came out on the other end feeling pretty good mm -hmm. about the process. But and, and like I'm naturally combative about stuff anyway, and it just when you're playing on people's vulnerabilities, <laughs> which is what a lot of comedy is, mm -hmm. it, that's going to happen. Well, yeah, I, I mean, if if they want to get better, I mean, you can learn a lot about someone and and who they are in improv, and I've seen a lot of people who. I've come down on certain things and uh, it sort of hurts them a little bit to hear it at first. Like you interrupt people a lot, you know, and yeah. that's something that people don't like to hear uh, as I interrupted Todd. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was just going to, I was just going to speak on the, like how frustrating it can be. Like I, I'm fairly sure I've stormed out of one in one of the classes. <laughs> <You did. laughs> in the morning. Yeah. But and a big part of it is just like, you're trying to learn. And even though you're in front of people that are also trying to learn, you're still putting a lot out in those classes. Yeah. And so. And it's terrifying. Yeah. And sometimes you do get told, like, Todd, you're talking about shit too much. <laughs> too, too many, you're putting too many dicks in the scene. Uh, well, I'm right. glad Dylan put a stop to that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> uh, so let me ask you this one more question. What you so you created your own theater. It's an improv theater. You built it from nothing and it's and you started how long ago? It was three uh, years first, ago. The first class was February of 2011. Started okay. at the end of February. So four years ago, you, you created a, an improv theater in Omaha. What was your vision for what you wanted to create when you started and how has that changed over the four years? Like how, what now is the, your vision for what you want that theater to be? Uh, great. So when I had started, I had given myself kind of a marker up to about five years, which I'm almost hitting now. One of them being to have my own theater after like two or three, I figured I'd rent some place and have my own place within two or three years so i kind of hit that marker mm -hmm. pretty much on the spot and the goal was to have shows about four nights a week i think within five years so and then let's see other than that though i was I thinking mean, more like general big picture stuff i mean what like what how do you want people to view it like what do you want people to think about you know what theater? i would, i mean i am a person that likes to aim very high mm -hmm. and then anywhere i get up through there i'll probably be satisfied as long as i'm somewhat close all right but like be quite honest i'd love it if omaha was known as the place to go to improv school. <laughs> all like, right yeah that right. would be ideal for me okay. now of course like that's what i should aim for but i, I also understand that there's it's chances are it's going to be in a bigger city even in 20 years from now but i mean that's what i aimed to go for yeah i mean that's just putting a label on it i mean what that really means is just you want it to be the best it can be yeah um, but i mean i would definitely love it if it was a place that everyone who did improv in the nation at least acknowledged. What what part of your goals or vision have you encountered over the last four years where th that made you think uh, maybe this wasn't the best idea or the best direction to take this, or maybe this is just something that I can't make work? Or has that happened at all? Oh, yeah. I've, I went through quite a struggle when we moved. Just a number of things that were kind of going on around that time, and I think... I moved to a spot that was not ready for what we do when we move there, mm -hmm. hoping that within a couple of years it would be a much better place. And it's becoming that now, luckily, and I think it's still in that direction. The city's kind of expanding in that way, which is really nice. I mean, it's been a slowly forged creation, but it's really <laughs> taking shape lately. It looks really nice in there. Thank you. Uh, and it's a fun place to perform. I mean, stand-ups even talk all the time about how great it is because... The audience that you do get at Backline is pay, pays attention. I mean, it's a good room to perform comedy in. So there's no oh, yeah. distractions really. I mean, sometimes you hear people out in the lobby, but we keep them quiet as much as we can. Yeah, 
Yeah, no. Will, Will runs his show there. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I've got the Love's Company show up there. Uh, and doing stand-up, doing stand-up at Backline is always a treat just because you do so many bar shows. And any time you get the opportunity to do comedy in a place where people are there to see comedy on purpose <laughs> is goddamn magical. <laughs> like... So, uh, yeah, cool. Um, what do you have coming up? Do you want to plug some things? Absolutely. Uh, well, we just started our own podcast at Backline that we'll be doing this Saturday at 10, which is Interview with an Improviser. I'll be interviewing Nick Rowley. And then improvisers do scenes based off the, the stories that we talk about. Um, we also have shows every Thursday through Saturday that you can check out at BacklineComedy.com. And I'll be teaching a level one starting this Sunday, July 12th at, uh, from five, four to 7 PM. You can check that out at BacklineComedy.com. 1618 Harney street. If you're in the neighborhood, uh, I believe is the address. All right, man. Well, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for coming by. Hey. Thank you for having me. Hey. Dylan Rody, everybody. Man, this is a real. So, how are we like? How are we doing the rest of the show? Because I can't believe he brought all of his entourage mm -hmm. down here to leave after like well, one ten-minute interview. And I didn't interview any of them because I feel like, as friends of the show, they've all been on the show before. Yeah. And I didn't want to interview Tracy Mock again. I know we've all we've all had enough Tracy Mock. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, we'll just get to our. We're gonna be cycling guests, so we'll get to our next guest. Uh, on the show today. Oh, we got a we got a whole lineup today. We got a whole lineup. They're all waiting in the green room. This uh this weekend, an American hero was dethroned. Joey Chestnut lost the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest for the first time in eight years to a man named Matt Megatoad Stony. We have a new hot dog eating champion, and joining us next on the podcast are the contestants who finished third through sixth in that contest. Yeah, you're on that show too. Hey, hey, hey. So, uh, welcome to the show, uh, Hot Dog Eaters. Why don't we go around and have you guys introduce yourselves and tell us who you are? Yeah, I'm John Megafrog Winners. <laughs> John John Megafrog Winners. That, now, J John Winners, with the nickname Megafrog, the winner of the contest was a man named Mega Toad. Did you guys have a conflict over the nicknames? Did you have to fight for that nickname? No, it was his first. Oh, okay. So this is not like a Grandmaster Flash, Grandmaster Melly Mel situation. Yeah, no, I liked it, and I thought, well, I could have one of those names. <laughs> that's 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 good thinking. All it's right. just an imitator. Oh, and uh, you, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Kelly Denise Bass. They do have a separate women's circuit. Yeah, but I'm I was given in the to, men's circuit. I'm given to under... Yeah, that's uh, quite an accomplishment. You're the Michelle Wee of eating. Uh, I don't know who that is, uh, but there was a girl at my high school named Michelle, and she's a bitch. You hear that, <laughs> Michelle Stevenson? We uh, Usually, I ask our guests not to actively talk shit on other people. Uh, how, did you do, how did you get under the men's circuit? I ate a lot of hot dogs. That's, well, that's a good answer. It's not tough. <laughs> All right. And uh, also we've got with us. Hello, my dear friend Jimmy. It is me, your friend Bella. <laughs> oh, oh, I've seen your Facebook page. I'm very popular on the Faces book. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's awesome. And uh, now, were you actually in the contest or were you just giving a motivational speech at the con competition? Well, I was hoping that I could be part of it because, you see, it is like a celebration of all the things hot dog. And I thought that I would absolutely have my shoe in. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, finally? Seriously, can we eat that hot dog? <laughs> oh, uh, no, I just brought it into the studio. Oh, come on, man. That thing <laughs> is giant. <laughs> I, think he, I think he's talking about me. You can't eat Bella. Oh, yeah. She's a giant, a giant hot dog. A giant hot dog. Yeah. Now, is it fair to say that you self-identify as a hot dog American? That is correct, my dear friend Will. That is how I am making it on the mill circuit, because my gender, it is indefinable. Now, <laughs> now contestants, this, uh, this year's Nathan's Famous competition was a close, close match between uh, Chestnut and Stoney. I mean, they blew everyone else away. Did you guys, was there ever a point in the hot dog eating competition where you just lost heart and felt like giving up? Because they were so far ahead. I oh, man, like, yeah. That, 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 that happens all the time. But you got to kind of, you know, work through it. You know, you just you just enjoy it and you go, hey, I'm eating a free meal. <laughs> I, think, uh, okay. I figure a lot of us were probably just imagining that we're going for third on this one. Right. I mean, I, I tried to get my boyfriend to break Joey Chestnut's jaw. 
Uh, interesting, since his nickname is Jaws, so you went, you had him go right. This is a, well, as a classic going, Tanya Harding move, right? Going for the ironic punishment, right? Well, I didn't, I didn't connect those two. I just thought if he didn't have a jaw, he couldn't eat. <laughs> oh, okay, very sure. literal. Eating is a mental game. Every every great eater will tell you that. Ninety percent mental, ten percent physically eating. Right, and so <laughs> when you're when you're there, when you're at the table, mouthful of dog. What's going through your mind? What are some mental tricks you use to to get you over the 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 eating hurdles? Uh, first thing I like to do is I like to get all the fifth grade images of thinking that I'm shoving wieners in my mouth out of my head. Uh, <laughs> right. I get that out right. of there because you'll start laughing. <laughs> right. And you're yeah, like, it makes sense. Look at all the wieners I'm shoving in. Yeah, I mean it's just logical. You can't you, have that. You can't eat while you're laughing. <laughs> That's right. Definitely That's not. right. It's yeah. funny just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I then, don't get it. <laughs> Oh, Bella. <laughs> From there you go, well, all right, they say uh, s- soak it, so I get it, I get them all wet right away. Dip it in water. I use a spray mister. Oh, right. That's good. Yeah. So, it's ketchup, ketchup water. So, so it's fair to say that to, when, you're, when you're shoving all those wieners in your mouth, it's very important to make sure you get it wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want moist buns when you're shoving wieners in your mouth. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Bella, you should come to a sleepover at my house. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sorry, I, what was your name again? I... Uh, McGlinty. Uh, Ted McGlinty. Ted McGlinty? Yeah. Isn't, uh, isn't there a famous actor named... No, that's Ted McGinley. Ah, I see. I, I get, I'm always getting you two confused. You look so much alike. Well, yeah, you know. Right. When you came into our studio today, I was like, oh, I invited a bunch of eating champions, not Ted McGinley from Scrubs. <laughs> There's also um, Iron Balls McGinty from The Jerk. Oh, Iron Balls. <laughs> I love Iron Balls. I understand, uh, McGlinty, that you actually came into this competition injured. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I had tennis elbow. <laughs> That's a major impediment to yeah, any competition. I mean, you can't, you can't grab the dog well It enough. really would impede your ability to shove wieners in your mouth at the necessary speeds. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it is really. Well, it's really not just tough. a. It's a. It's a. It's a game of uh, mental dexterity and manual dexterity. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's also a game of inches. <laughs> that, that, right, Bella. This I understand was your first hot dog eating competition. Yet surprisingly, I don't know why it's taking everyone so long to ask Bella. It seemed like I am constantly advertising for hot dogs. Right. Yeah. As a <laughs> giant hot dog yourself, you would think it'd be a natural fit. Uh, what did you take away from the competition? Well, it is just a real testament to everyone's willpower and ability to just keep going and strive to win, no matter how much the thing you are doing will kill you. <laughs> that is great advice. <laughs> did you uh, feel like a cannibal at all? No, of course not. It's, uh, a hot dog is just a food like any other, and you it's delicious and full of nourishment, just like how you probably think other people are. <laughs> well, uh, Will, you've had those thoughts. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He's been looking at me hungry. <laughs> Let's, let, and I just want to... Weren't you on season four of RuPaul's Drag Race? Look, the girl. <laughs> oh, that's it. I knew it. That's I it. I thought you looked familiar, too. Oh, I... I... <clears throat> You were one of the guy's girlfriends, right? I, uh, <laughs> that was a different life. <laughs> I'm Kelly Denise Best now. Okay. So if we could stick with that, yeah, that would I, be no, no, real I mean, appreciated, Mr. Doherty. Hey, look, we don't, we don't need to dig into that right now. I just, I want to close it out with this. I'm assuming that all four of you will be entering the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Championship next year as well. Uh, you've got a year to practice. What are you going to do differently? How are you going to train for the next 364 days? Let's start with you. Uh, let's start with Kelly Denise. I'm attending college as a freshman girl. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll connect the dots. <laughs> our... <laughs> <laughs> do you really want me to say it, Jimmy? No. Oh, okay. I would like to move on to McGlinty, Ted McGlinty. Because it's by putting a lot of dicks in my mouth. <laughs> oh, now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, McGlinty, you've got a year to train. What changes are you going to make? Uh, I'm going to work on my uh, pre-soaking technique. 
I mean, I'm going to make sure they get twice as wet so they go down a lot quicker. That's the same answer Kelly Denise just gave. Uh, <laughs> our friend Bella, you've got a year for your sec- to train for your second competition. What are you going to do differently? Well, I think I just have to keep working hard to just shove out of my mind all of the concerns I have about my arteries. And, <laughs> and as long as I can just wipe away all conscious awareness of the terrible death that is filled in the bits of uh, animal intestine that uh, everyone is mowing down on one (laughs) after another after 50 others, then I think I have a chance. Oh, if that's all you needed, then yeah, I can help you with that. (laughs) Thank you, Will. I was clinically dead for three minutes last year. (laughs) That's, that's That's a natural danger of the competition. Uh, and finally, uh, Mega Frog winners. Uh, what are you going to do, diff- do differently next year? How are you going to train? Uh, lately, I've been really trying to get together with Wimmers. Um, trying to <laughs> try to get them to change their name. They're not really into that. Um, so I figured we're just making something deal. where it's like Wimmers, Winners, Wieners, uh, <laughs> Winnevers. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> they're, See, they're, not- they're carry on hot dogs that you take wherever you want. So you're not actually trying to get better at the competition. You're just looking for sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. I, well, if you're not... I look at this like American Idol. You don't need first. You just need something afterwards. Boom. Nailed it. Now, All right. When you say carry on hot dogs, do you mean like the rotted animal meat on the side of the road that uh, birds are pecking at? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> that is what the word carry Carrion, means. yes. Okay. Carry on hot I meant dogs. Like yes, that airplane, is correct. Airplane hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, travel hot dogs. Oh. I, never, I never even thought of that. That's a good idea. Do they have to be a specific ounces to carry on? <laughs> They're not allowed to have more than seven ounces of fluid in those wieners. <laughs> <laughs> I All don't right. get it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for stopping by. We really enjoyed having you on the show. Uh, do you, Does anybody have anything they want to plug before they leave? Uh, you can check me out at johnsonvillebrats.com. <laughs> Brett, now just, that, just that put... was your crossover toy line with the Bratz dolls. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is spelled with a Z. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay, okay, good. Uh, you Johnson... can like you friend Bella on the Faces book at facebook.com slash you friend Bella. Excellent. I'll be at Metro South Campus <laughs> next year. Uh, you're going to want to check her out there, fellas. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to be at uh, www.com. Uh, <laughs> hey. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. That was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about hot dog eating. I know. I didn't realize that there was going to be so much to learn. Well, I thought you, I, I figured you would already be an expert at hot dog eating, but you, you know, know, it's just you know, there's there's so many more levels to go. You know, just like we were talking about, everybody thinks they know what comedy is. Yeah. I thought I knew how to eat hot dogs, but here we are. It's a, a bottomless well of information. Uh, moving on, our next guests have come all the way to appear on the Jimmy Curve from overseas. Our, our good friend, podcast reviewer, um, oh, what is it? Sebastian his? Schroeder. Sebastian Schroeder. And I want to make sure you pronounce the umlaut that's somewhere yeah. in that last name. Our good friend, Sebastian Schroeder, uh, introduced us to this next group. They're a band from, uh, from Europe, specifically Germany. He said they were his favorite band and... Since he liked our show so much, he he put it together, and so we're going to have them on the show. They have currently the number one hit single on the German pop charts. Why don't you guys tell us the name of your band and introduce uh, yourselves and tell us what you play. The name of our band is Gerhard Bernd. It It is sad for your voice uh, being so uh, Americanized. Uh, it is. It's very sad. Yes, so it's so it's very hard for you to be able to pronounce it right. Yes, it has upset all of us. Indeed. Oh, I, Indeed. So I've already right. insulted we, the band. Here, here we are acting as the ignorant Americans. Yeah. Right off the top. Again, you're being redundant I with that statement. Yes. Yeah. She said, we are pop, so if we yeah. keep it fun and inviting. Yes. yes. Uh, we okay. make the music for the peoples. Oh, okay. It's depressing. Yeah, well, huh. uh, yeah, well, Mr. Uh, Schroeder told us that he, he loves your band. Oh, I. Yeah. He's always taking his shirt off at the, at our carnivals. Yeah, you yeah. play at carnivals a, a lot. Enthusiastic 
music aficionado. Ah, yes. okay, good. Well, uh, why don't you each give us your names and what instrument you play in the band? Uh, my name is Hans, and I play rhythm guitar. Excellent. I am the drummer, and they just call me Beats. Aha! Uh-huh. My uh, name is Beats Mihoff. <laughs> it's very is funny it, when he says just, that. That's not really your name. You're is just that, telling a joke. No, it is very true, his name. It is an a unfortunate cr- upbringing. Oh. I did not Miss- think we were going to bring that up today, Tracy. Oh, I'm sorry. You have just given away. <laughs> <laughs> I am, in fact, named Tracy. That is correct. Oh, okay. Is that your first or last name? Uh, it is my only name. Oh. Uh, it's, oh. it's hyphenated. I have jo- yes, it is <laughs> Trey hyphen C. Oh, okay. That makes... Like the letter C? Like like the juice box drink. Like it is like ah. the high C. I am a Tracy. Gotcha. Gotcha. And what do you what what do you do in the band? I will play the triangle and I also do the vocals. Excellent. And uh finally I am Peter Kumschatz. <laughs> you can just call me Peter. <laughs> Peter. I will. That will be what I call you. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Kumshatz is his father's name. Tell me, guys, how did... I that reference. <laughs> and uh, tell us how you guys got together. How did you form as a band? Well, we each played instruments. That helped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was a flyer uh, at uh, the local coffee shop saying, we need a person who plays the triangle and vocals. And I it took a little slip of paper from the bottom of the flyer, and uh, upon it was written a phone number. And then I place the call. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's a pretty standard way of forming a, a band. And then you guys got to go. Which one of you writes most of the songs? Well, that's, I think that's, pa- uh, Peter is very good. He's a wonderful no. lyricist. Go yes. on. <laughs> He's, he has always having way with words. He's, he paints an evocative picture. Sexually. Yes, it is like when he is writing music, it is like he is having sex with all of the paper, okay. and the notes on the paper are his the little beads of his sex sweat. Well, <laughs> pl- uh, playing music can be a very a very arousing erotic act. I mean, I don't think any of us uh, are are uh, that's not an alien concept to any of us. Is that is that something that you specifically go for? Uh, with your music, or is it just uh, something that naturally comes about? No, when I am playing my triangle, I'm very much picturing it like I I am fondling the audience. Yes, I like to what? imagine they're fondling me. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm making love to my drums. I'm, I'm Sometimes unique. I physically. By by pounding on them with sticks? Yes, that is how I make love. <laughs> I, am, I am unique. A eunuch? So I, oh. I be, no. Oh, I'm sorry. He had a much more unfortunate upbringing than I did. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, I what slapped. happened? Uh, well, it, it was the choice. Oh, you... Uh, okay. Uh, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a choice. Some choices are made for it you. Was, <laughs> it was somebody's choice. Yes. <laughs> for <It's not> you. <laughs> It was a conscious decision. <laughs> yes, it was a conscious decision by somebody. Uh, I mean, were, I was were, were, no you accident. were you at one time? I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not real politically savvy, so I don't want to use the wrong term it's here. It's a Kendall dancer. Okay, oh. were, were you at one time uh, considered an uh, undesirable? Well, if we are being completely honest, it was a choice that was made by the band. We took a vote. <laughs> <laughs> we figured if he's going to do backup vocals, he better be able to do them right. Yes. Yeah. My it's thinking hard to was... harmonize when you have a schwanz. Yes. Ah. Thought, My were... thinking was just more pussy for me. <laughs> we we like all that. went into Such it like with our drum. own goals and needs. And you all agreed, but came to it through different paths. Yes. But mm-hmm. like a true democracy. Like a true democracy. Mm-hmm. A that true, is how a band works. A true mm-hmm. German democracy. Yeah. There is no dictator in a German band. Oh. We had we had a keyboardist who was pretty good. Uh, there was a, a flight, you know, remember the flight over Algeria? He, he died, but we we liked him. He was good member yeah. for our band. Lost. So he. What happened to him now? You had a keyboardist and he died. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was a b- big political thing. Uh, yeah. I don't. 
uh, read the news. Oh, well, this so, was years ago. Am I am I correct in understanding that there was some type of uh, large political movement, perhaps yeah. not dissimilar to that of the movement to free Pussy Riot? We think that we think that the the government wanted him dead. Uh-huh. Wow! So you guys have he really was involved faced... in some some things, which is a real shame too, because he was actually number one on our list to be unicized, <laughs> and then you know we we had to we had to come down. <laughs> so he, when the door he didn't... closes, the window opens. <laughs> so he made one cut, but lost another. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's a pun. <laughs> no, it's life. <laughs> that is life. That is life. All right, guys. Well, we fought. We. Personally, I thought, hey, now we're down two dicks. More <laughs> pussy for me. <laughs> That's, it, I, and in I reality, like... the guitar handles it so much well when there's nothing so. What's next for you guys? Are you going to record another album? Are you going to go on tour? I'm going to fuck the shit out of my drums in front of an audience. Calm down now, okay? <laughs> we need to plug our that's, music. We I have mean, music. metaphorically. We have an album what? coming out, yes. We need the yeah. clean radio. We, are, we have released both in English and in, in Dutch. Double album? Uh, wow, that's uh <laughs> if you can see right here. You can, you can, you can see it right here that he was I, think you, with I can't I can't see it. Yeah. You held that up and shoved it in my face. Yes, that, I, can I can see, see it. it. You is, don't have to. It is hard in the light because it is a lenticular cover. Yeah. I don't oh, um, I don't know what that means. It, the image it changes as you tilt it. Gotcha. Oh yeah, yeah. It's one of those illusions, yes. optical illusion things. We. We <laughs> all think that it's just that way. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's very nice. Great. So, yeah, and I'm assuming you're going on tour to promote the album. Yes, we are going all over Europe and then Texas, oddly, and yes. then back to <laughs> one Europe. Stop more. One, one stop in Texas. One stop in Texas. And yeah. then, Look, well, then next want... year we come back. We're in Charlotte, South Carolina. We wanted to keep Austin weird, and we think we do that well. All right. <laughs> we're actually uh, we'll be playing a rally to uh, reinstate the. Uh, <laughs> Southern South Carolina flag. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was tickling you. Say it again. <laughs> yes. We will be playing a special rally in South Carolina defending their right to keep their to uh, bring back the con- flag. To bring back the Confederate yeah. flag. You are de- you are we just feel like we know what it's like to be an oppressed people. Yeah. <laughs> we also are aware of the powers that flags have. Ah, okay. Uh, all right. I mean, there's so much history attached. Uh, it's not for me to argue with you. I try not to take political stances on this show, but uh, it is nice to hear uh, all kinds of different yeah. uh, points of view. We think it's very important to be political because we want to be like the German U2. <laughs> I just miss the Dukes of Hazard. You got that in Germany. Yes. Oh, yes. We're a big fan of the good old boys. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they right. never mean it's no a, harm. It's a it's an orange beetle over there. <laughs> it's still a beetle. <laughs> they had to, they had to localize some of the references. But uh, that makes sense. It's mostly the same. That makes yeah. sense. That it's makes actually sense. more impressive when the beetle does all the big jumps. <laughs> yeah, I would can imagine. They, can they still jump in through the window of the beetle? Yes, actually, because <laughs> they are actually wider windows on the beetle. Oh, okay. Okay. If anything, it's easier. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good. It still has the Confederate flag on top. Yes. So. Well, who, who, I, I'm assuming that the Dukes of Hazard, the German Dukes of Hazard, are they still called Dukes? Or it is like the barons. Yeah, the barons yeah, of yeah, hazard. The, the barons of hazard. <laughs> okay, good. I've I've found out that they were dukes over here. Right. Yes. Yeah. So. so the barons of hazard are obviously a major right. influence in your life. The There's barons von hazard. Barons von hazard. Yeah, right. yeah. What? Oh, uh, you're familiar with. It. Yeah. <laughs> what are what are some of your musical influences? Like, what other musicians and bands have influenced your sound? The monkeys. What was that? Uh, what, Marcy, Ma- Marcy's Playground. I really liked yeah, Sex the, and yeah. Candy. Sex and Candy. Yeah. Marcy, yes. yeah. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> I listen exclusively to Kanye West <laughs> because I'm a genius and only he understands me. <laughs> Typical drama. It's why we have sort of a hip hop feel. Yeah. Good. Okay. A little bit of that influence in there. Excellent. Yes. Uh, and I, I also am a big fan of the children's singer Raffi. Not, I'm not familiar. Oh, you do. Uh, he sings Baby Beluga. Yes, Baby yes. Beluga. Baby, okay, all right. Baby Beluga. Excellent. That makes. And he does a cover of the Ringo Starr song, Octopus's Garden. Okay, I'll check that out. Uh, I understand at your live shows, you actually make audiences sign a waiver to get in. They have to sign some kind of a release form to attend your live shows. 
There are fluids. Yes. Like we said, our shows are like, we are making love to them. And right. so you want to make sure it is consensual. So it's, a, yeah, it's a, they, there has to be a consensual agreement just to get in because things are going to happen. Yeah. Now, is, is it true that at every show, uh, one audience member uh, will be, uh, what, how, how did you phrase it earlier? Eukinized? Yes. You, you, unicized. Unicized. Yes. Excuse me. I'm sorry, the 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 pronunciation is still a little. Un- Unicize does not fit all. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it's that's why we don't use the word castration because we feel like that's what's. Oh, the it's problem. an ugly word. It's yeah, it's an ugly, ugly word. Ugly word. It, you'd be surprised. We have Hans has such fans that they they are practically throwing themselves uh, upon the tablet where we mm. perform these uh, unicizations. One man showed up with it already done. <laughs> that's amazing. Yes. Overachiever. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's a, that's incredible. You I signed it for him. Mm. He's a big fan. Yes. He kept it in a bag. <laughs> well, uh, that is that is something else. So, uh, yeah, where where's the next show? Where can we have people go see you guys? Well, uh, we said Austin. Oh, okay, Austin. So, and many many places in Europe. All right, and check out the new album, yeah. which is called... Oh, so while we are here in Lincoln, we will be playing the Zoo Bar tonight. <laughs> okay, that makes, <laughs> that makes sense. That's good. So go go to the Zoo Bar tonight. This is coming out on a Thursday. Oh, they will be too late to have seen it. No, we, we perform at Zoo Bar on Thursday, too. Oh, what? do we? Because now we I feel like you're making promises <laughs> that we are maybe not able to fulfill. I'm not even <laughs> intending to keep that one. I'm out of here by Thursday. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you are so, so you typical are so drama. Come to the zoo bar on Thursday, Such and anyone who's cut off their own genitals gets in for free. <laughs> well, let's not make that yet. I mean, <laughs> yeah. still the, the label take it's a lot business. of money. I'm actually curious to see who shows up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the next be... album is called "Rammstein Is Dead." Oh wow! Yeah. Is, is that a threat? No, it's just how we feel. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that, that is the yeah. English version. The, the German version is Rammstein is tot. Okay, oh, that, yeah. <laughs> the lenticular cover is an image of us all wielding hatchets and uh, waving them at uh, Rammstein. At Rammstein, okay. That's good. That's, that's a, now, that is an album I can get behind. Thank you so much for joining us. Say the name of the band one more time. Oh, you, I think you've already <laughs> <laughs> promoted us enough. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I, it, I've i heard it is taboo to say your own band name twice on an episode of a podcast. We don't right. like to brag. Thank you so much for stopping by the Jimmy Curve. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey. Thank you. Did you learn something about German music, Will? I, I did. I learned something about German music, and I learned something about making love. <laughs> so, good, good. Uh, both useful skills. Our next guests have now been... Now that the band is gone, I think it's, I'm comfortable saying, more pussy for me. Uh, ah, I see what you did there. Our next guests, they are... We've just had the 4th of July, and of course, what does everyone do on the 4th of July? Eat meat. Okay, I was going for light fireworks. But oh, yeah, 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 no. Yeah, eat meat no, is a good one. Let's do your thing. So, uh, our next guests are the uh, Coalition... For firework safety, uh, I think uh, they've all had firework-related injuries, and they've decided to get to get together and do something about it to prevent that from happening to the I mean, children of America, our most valuable resource. Right. Besides oil. Huh? Oil. Oh, valuable resource. Yes. Children, that's it's, right. it's, that's right. it's oil, then children, then right. coal. Then the elderly. Right. Right. I got gotcha. you. So... Uh, let's go ahead and bring them in right now. The Coalition for Fireworks Safety. How you doing, guys? Yeah, you're on the show too. Hey, 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 yeah, now, awesome. now you guys have all had firework related injuries, right? Yep. I'm sad yeah. to say yes. Uh, yeah. Who? Which? Who started this coalition? That'd be me. And what's your name, sir? Byron. Byron. Byron Church. And what caused you to? What? What made you want to do this? What? What made this feel necessary? Well, as you can see, I've lost my teeth in a bottle rock related incident. I, I I couldn't even tell you speak very well. Oh, he's pulling. Oh, oh, oh. he pulled his teeth out. Oh, well, oh I mean, I could do. I could do the oh, interview like this. It's, oh. it will no, be better. Put, put him back in. Put him back in. That is the face of tragedy. Oh yeah, and uh, how did you lose those teeth? A bottle rocket incident. I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I was. It was a dare. 
Oh, and uh, yeah, uh, like, that, that was it was kind of more of a who can fit the most bottle rockets in their mouth. Who can fit the most I, bottle? I did win. Whoa! Well, good job. No, and and then seven, seven. Oh wow! I I was expecting a higher number than that. Well, I feel like. I mean, I, I feel like I could fit more bottle rockets. <laughs> That's what. But, but I mean, the gauntlet you should not do from, that. That's what we're here to prevent problem. you from doing, Will Doherty. <laughs> right, you're right, and that's that's why we're here to bring the message to the people. And uh, you, sir, your name and uh, my name is Cecil Thompson. Cecil Thompson, and why'd you join the movement? Uh well, I uh, I didn't lose any kind of physical uh, thing. I, I haven't lost my teeth, but uh, one time on a on a pretty vicious dare. Uh, uh, basically, you know those uh, spinning flowers? You know the ones you light and they turn on the ground and they make I, the noises? I do. They're beautiful. Yeah. I sat on one and hit oh. it. And uh, it, it... Oh! Yeah, it took a good three or four layers of dermis off my hind end. Look, I don't... Okay, can, maybe that this, is I don't nasty. think that this sounds, is a laughing matter. That sounds right? no, nasty. I'm, I, I, mean, I apologize. You wouldn't be laughing if you've seen the scar. No. I, I'm I'm not laughing. but I, And forgive me, forgive me, but this may be a stupid question. If you need to, go ahead. Did you spin very rapidly? No. Did the... Did the no. The, <laughs> okay. The thing just set me on fire. I, I don't... The physics just aren't isn't there. Yeah, can't, can't. yeah. Right, you're right. Well, it's sorry. not a swing. It doesn't have that nothing. kind of propulsive. Will, I no, don't think you're nothing. taking this seriously. Not at all. And I and you know, uh and you you ma'am, your name yes, and hi, hi, hello. My name is Marion Churchland, and uh, I I regrettably uh, I inhaled too much of the s smoke bombs. Oh 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 what? no! What were you? How did that happen? Were you trapped in a room with them, or no? Was that... It was much more embarrassing than that. Oh no! No, you see, I, I just love all the, the beautiful colors that they get off. They are very pretty. And uh, I, I did one of them. I did one of them color runs. You know? No. The color run you do. You do like the five Ks. Yeah, you do like a five K, and then you got your friends, and they got the the, the colorful colorful powders and they oh okay they, they throw them at you and then you come out looking like like a, like a beautiful rainbow at the end and i thought that sounds frivolous it is it's very frivolous and exciting <laughs> and uh so i surrounded myself with the colorful gas bombs because they they leave a little stain of the color that right that, that they emit and I, I wanted i wanted to experience that again jimmy i just love the, the feeling i had at the end of that color run and well and being as how you were in a 5K at the time, you know, you you were taking in much more oxygen than you normally would. It's true. Yes, I was trying to replicate the entire situation. So I was running and I was just taking in so much smoke. Jimmy, I used to have a beautiful singing voice. Oh, that that is a terrible tragedy. It It ruined your voice. And I just want, I just want... Everyone to know this is very serious times. You gotta be careful. Right? Yeah, you lost your singing voice, and no Cecil here lost three or four layers of dermis. Yes, on my hind end. That is one of many things that his butt and my voice have in common. <laughs> oh, yeah, along with many colors. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay, and uh, and finally, you, sir. Yeah, my name is Taylor Swift. No relation. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, I might have had one of the more unusual incidents as I had, was playing with two of the snakes. You know, you know these as you light them. Yeah, it's like a little, it looks like a little black pellet. Yeah, and, and the you thing light. is, you light them and then they go from one, one end, it kind of just slowly rises up and it looks like a snake is growing out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had, my thing was that I wanted, I was making a Vine video because I was trying to be Vine famous. And right, so, right. I put it. I wanted to put them on my eyelids, and then it looked like it was like a cool music video where they were coming out, snakes were coming out of my eyeballs. And uh, the thing was, I lit them, and then I went to put them on my eyes, and I put them backwards, and it just pushed the snakes into my eyeballs. That's, and so I lost so, my sight. So you intentionally put two burning snake pellets directly into your eye. Well, no, I had put them on my eyelids. Gotcha. Okay. My eyes were closed. He's, wow. He's not stupid. That, no. I, just, yeah, I no. just didn't have good aim. And that's what grisly we're situation. Here. That's yeah. why we came together. Yeah. I mean, I can see you. I can see the scars over where your eyes are supposed to be right now. I 
I wasn't going to say anything or point it out. They kind of look like I have pupils here. That's what other people have told you? Yeah. Obviously, you can't see them. It's yeah, a, that's it what is we a little tell them. confusing at times, yeah. Man, he that never is, blinks. That is a tale of tragedy. So, you guys have formed this coalition to prevent... For, are you trying to get legislation passed? How are you getting the word out? Pamphlets. Handing out pamphlets. So, you're really only Leaflets. trying to get the word out in a small area. Well, I, I'm also trying to, you know, put warnings on the, the dancing flowers. Uh, do not sit while lit. It rhymes so people will remember. This is the Fireworks Understanding Coalition, and okay. I feel like we have really done a good job at getting the word fuck out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, I, I understand that uh, you guys are attempting to bring your message, because the important thing is to get the message to the children, the most vulnerable part of our population. Right. Well, that, so you, you got... that seems like what it would be. But it's mostly adults. Really? Uh, yeah. The problem you, we're mostly having fireworks problems 18 with adults to twenty nine. That 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 is those are the people who do the most harm to themselves, or those are the people that you want to save. Yes, they usually yeah. do the most. Well, now they would have the kids would have a parent watching them that would be responsible for their life, and then most people eighteen to twenty nine don't. So we want to be their parents. their parents. Yeah, I mean, you get a six year old, they kind of understand fire equals hot, so they don't get close to it. Right. right. It's when it's when they reach adulthood, it's that false sense of security. I'll, I'll do what I want. Feeling. I know what I'm doing. You know right. how that works. Now I I sense an opportunity here to get your message out, and I don't know if you guys have put this together yet, but one of your members is named Taylor Swift, and you do have footage that you filmed of your injury happening. You could get a lot of YouTube hits if you posted that video to YouTube what? with the name Taylor Swift, which is in no way copyright infringement. It's your actual But, name. I mean, it would be Taylor Swift loses teeth. Eyes. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I have about 350 views on Vine. Okay. I didn't link my name to it, though. I suppose I could yeah. probably maybe... He usually posts under his Vine handle. Right, yeah, which is... Taylor Swift. <laughs> Except he doesn't spell it the right way. Yeah, it's Taylor, like, you know. Like, With no R. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of made it street that way. He figured it might work for an urban market. The NRA likes to say, you know, guns don't kill people. People kill people. Well, so, specifically for Byron and Cecil, it doesn't really sound like fireworks are the problem. It sounds like you two are just bad at refusing dares. Take these fireworks out of our hot hands. Right. Guns, <laughs> guns, or fireworks. Fireworks don't kill people. Dares take teeth. Right. It sounds like if you guys could just refuse dares, there would be no problem with fireworks. Well, I mean, we, we can't call the thing a dare program. There's already one of those out there. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah, that's he's got we, me. Taylor Swift's the fireworks dare. Understanding <laughs> <coalition>. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor Swift's, Swift's dare, dare program. Yeah, yeah, it couldn't. That's why we did the fireworks and understanding coalition. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know, we're like, you know, we got to figure out something. Yeah. We said, you know yeah. what? Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it came about. Okay. That's where it started, and that's where we hope to end it. Was fucking it. Yeah, you can be you can be a fuck with Taylor Swift. <laughs> My business card say Taylor Swift. Now, fuck. Now, now nobody is gonna follow an internet link that says fuck with Taylor Swift. Nobody is gonna look that up, guys. I no, think, man, she's so mean. bad at self promotion. She's mean when you say you're a man. Cause, I mean, she took down yeah. Apple. And, Apple yeah, tried to fuck with Taylor, with Taylor Swift. Swift. Yeah, that. Well, we've learned how far that gets you. Well, well, she did get paid. They, well, they wound up changing it. But surely, yeah. but surely this isn't about money for you folks. This is about... She's kind of like the opposite of Newton. She fell on the apple's head. <laughs> That's a good one. Like That's that? Really that good is one. a good one. It's really See? good. We'll put See, that on the poster. And that's why when you need to get your message out, it's a, it's a great little comedy routines like that when you can get. Because I thought I thought maybe assembly for grade schoolers, but then you said the real problem is like eighteen to twenty nine year olds. So maybe we need to get some assemblies for college students. Well, we have. Well, we. That's why we, we traveled here to be on the Jimmy Curve. Yeah, that's why we're in Lincoln's Lincoln. College town. Oh, sorry. I've never you, been myself. Are you going to be? Are you going to be uh, performing some kind of educational? Uh, uh, assembly we'll be at for the, the students. Bar. Yeah, we'll be at <laughs> the okay. prepping. Mostly Good. just handing out pamphlets. Yeah. I'll, I'll be showing a slideshow of okay. my missing teeth. Sure. How, how many slides do you have? Well, it's not a slide, not like slides, like he just slides his teeth in and out. <laughs> <laughs> 
likes to go. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. And then I I'll, thought it was going to be like a no, like a, that's what he calls a slide a show. Pictorial well, presentation. I, after that, I play a slide whistle. And <laughs> okay, yeah. so it's a full. Because we try to keep the thing, you know, like. Well, you don't want Buckley to with Taylor Swift. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to scare him. You know, slide show. Yeah, slide and I mean, he's really the only one who can show anything. I mean, you really can't show her voice. Everybody can already see his eyes, and right. I'm not showing my butt to everybody. Well, I- although if you go to our website, we have a series <laughs> <laughs> you can see. You can it is a, it is the flash image butt. opening, and 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 your website is that is that. <laughs> It's at uh, fuck Taylor Swift, right? Indeed. <laughs> yeah, just that was on domain dot com. <laughs> fuck Taylor Swift dot com. I used the promo code for that one. see. Okay. Yes. And then you just click on the GIF of the anus. <laughs> we I, like to I, show. No, I, know, the I, know, I normally never. I normally never I, tell our ironically listeners. Ironically, though, to... when you log in, you hear a MIDI of Katy Perry's fireworks. <laughs> That's yeah, I, unfortunately it's sung by me, so it really didn't work out. Right. I would have sung it myself, but you know. <laughs> oh, oh, so sad. It would have been so beautiful. Uh well, it was really great having you guys here. I normally never say this on my show, but but please, everybody, if you have a beating heart in your chest, go to fucktaylorswift.com and click on the anus. Yes, you, you can <laughs> if, there is a sh- if there is a shred of humanity. Left in you, my listeners. Please don't hesitate. Stop listening to the show right now. Go to fucktaylorswift.com and click on the anus. Can you please sign up for our mailing list so you can be a uh, fuck yourself? <laughs> <laughs> definitely de- d- do that. Uh, and go check out the slideshow presentation at the Sue Bar. <laughs> <laughs> which will be this Friday night. Uh, you can see the entire slide presentation. Um, slideshow. Right, right. Slideshow. <laughs> A little preview for you. <laughs> A little bit more preview. <laughs> All right. That, so that, is, that is the Fireworks Understanding Coalition. <laughs> Check them out. Do, a good, do your good deed for the day. Hey. Thanks a lot for coming by. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you to all of the guests we've had on the show. And now that they've cleared out of the Jimmy Curve studio, I would like to thank the people who are here for some or no reason. Nah, whatever. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth wall. Take what? The fourth wall. Take that fourth wall. <laughs> So, uh, Dylan... The cat just walked right back in the bag. <laughs> Dylan Rohde, thank you for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. I felt me. pretty good about uh, a lot of those. <laughs> 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 Anytime yeah. I can do a bunch of puns. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, you are the... the I, I always... Whenever we're doing improv shows, I always want to be like... Okay, everybody, we've put... There's a bomb under the stage that will go off at the ninth <laughs> pun. Uh, um, oh, we'd be dead every night. Uh, uh, Dylan, what do you want to... We, we, did, we did plugs we for did you. We did plugs. It's your... Plug. Tracy Mock, friend of the show, friend of the host, the wonderful and talented Tracy Mock. What do you have coming up? Where can we find you? Uh, well, uh, uh, since I think Eric and I will, will trade off here, but I uh, would like to plug... Uh, July 16th at the backline, uh, uh, a, a team that you are a part of, yes. Words with Friends with Benefits, will be performing I'm on that. there, and uh, that'll be at 8 p.m. at the backline, and uh, it's a really fun narrative improv team that we're a part of in the, in the style of 88 Improv, which, by the way, we'll have special guest Tim Schoenfeld performing with us that evening. Also, friend of the show, Tim Schoenfeld, mm-hmm. will be uh, performing with us that night, so that'll be fun. Come check that out. Uh, Eric? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let's Eric see. Eric Green, friend of the show, friend of the yes. host. Yes. You can hear me now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, uh, I'm a member of Big Canvas along with Tracy, uh, and we have uh, three shows uh, this month. Uh, we have one uh, July 11th uh, with special guest. Jimmy Putnam. I'm also on that one. Yes. Uh, we also have a show that'll on... That'll be at the back line. That'll be at the back line uh, at uh, 1618 Harney. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be five bucks, uh, eight o'clock. Uh, you can actually come to see that, and then afterwards you can see 
uh, Dylan record his podcast uh, with Nick Rowley, so that's always fun. Interview with an improviser. And I think I'm in that, but I may not mm-hmm. have confirmed that I am. <laughs> <laughs> We're Consider all this my confirmation. Yay! Yay. Yay. Uh, and then we also have a show at the PS Collective with a bunch of poets on the uh, 24th, and uh, we also have a show at Sozo. Uh, on the 31st at 1314 Jones, where we're doing uh, our first class show. Uh, Big Canvas has been doing classes, uh, and uh, we also have uh, a workshop on the 18th. So much stuff right now. Cool. Uh, I feel like we're doing everything. Uh, can you find Big Canvas on Facebook? Or you where? can. You can find uh, Big Canvas on Facebook at facebook.com slash bigcanvasne. Uh, you can also find our website, uh, bigcanvasne.com. We're Big Canvas any on all of the webs. Pretty much. Cool. Todd Dillon. Uh, I'm going to be on the Jimmy Pod- <laughs> Jimmy Kerr podcast on Thursday. Uh, anytime between now and then and after, I'll be giving out hugs wherever you need them. And Todd and I will probably be watching some mixed martial arts fights. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to invite me and Jimmy over to your house Saturday Night Live, uh, Saturday Night Live, to watch Saturday Night Live. Oh, we will hopefully be alive on yeah. a Saturday night. I'm, what I'm saying is I don't have anywhere to watch the uh, McGregor Mendez fight. <laughs> and Jimmy has a show. Uh, so please let me come to your house on Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Todd Dillon. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dillon, did you? Yeah, we've already. Just repeat again. Uh, we always have level ones. The next level one starts July 12th. Will Doherty, Sunday, what do you have Sunday, coming up? Sunday. Um, I'm going to be, I'm hosting my interruption show at Backline on the 25th. Uh, the Love's Company show. That's always real uncomfortable. <laughs> I like that show a lot. It's great. Um, and then uh, on the 30th of this month, I'm taking over the Taco About It over at Knickerbockers. So I'm going to be hosting the first show with my wife, Serenity. And that's going to be real, real weird, too. Nice. So I hope that we can uh, make everyone a little bit more uncomfortable. And if you can, please come out to the Funny Bone on the 15th and see me. I'm doing Clash of the Comics. Uh, Any little bit of support would really help. I am super nervous. I have no confidence in myself. So that's what I'll be doing. (laughs) I will be attempting to hide those things behind a bunch of yelling. Uh, That feels pretty good. Anybody else have anything? Oh, earlier I said work work rate. And the actual word I was looking for for was attrition rate. <laughs> <laughs> it was way earlier in the podcast. Okay. I'll just go back and edit that in. <laughs> this is the correction section. <laughs> okay, uh, that was the plugs. Plug. All right, that's going to do it for our show. So for uh, sidekick Will Doherty. Hey, I'm trying to th- I, I, uh, uh, What would Josh say here? <laughs> I'm so confused. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, our brother. <laughs> okay, hold on. Goodbye, buddy. For absentee Joshua Vossler. Goodbye, buddy. Oh, I was just going to go with silence. Uh, Uh, (laughs) And for friend of the show, Tracy Mock. I apologize, probably. (laughs) (laughs) Special feature guest, Dylan Rohde. I do not apologize. Friend of the show, Todd (laughs) Dylan. I believe in you. (laughs) Friend friend of the show, Eric Green. I'm glad Will didn't say the N-word this week. It's not too late. (laughs) I have been your host, Jimmy Putnam. Thank you and good night. (laughs)